There we go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Painting Through the Pandemic. I'm Shauna Sue. I own Crooked Door Studio in Uptown Marysville. So happy y'all are here tonight. We're going to have fun tonight. I'm super excited about this painting. I can't wait to see what all our foxes look like because they're all going to be different. I'm excited to see if y'all do one, if you do two, if you do like one for each member of your family. I don't know. We'll see what happens happens this is your painting tonight it's going to be whatever you want it to be right we're going to roll with it and see what happens so um first things first i listed supplies in the chat box over on zoom if you're watching this on youtube it's in the comments uh you can find the supply list there if you don't have something that i've listed out don't worry about it we'll wing it it'll be fine right um the only place that we might have issues is when we get to red. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And we really shouldn't have issues with red. We'll talk about that. Stay tuned. Okay. Um, I also listed out in the chat box where you can uh, donate to the studio. This class doesn't cost a thing tonight. I don't charge anything for classes. But for all of you that have donated through PayPal or Venmo, um, sent checks, money to the studio, I really appreciate that. That's what is helping me keep my studio space in the uptown open until we get to the point where we can physically reopen it. So right now it's just a warehouse where I go in once a week and pack supplies and get supplies ready for everybody for class on Saturday nights. But fingers crossed, May, fingers crossed, we might have enough of us vaccinated be back to some kind of normal and be able to open that studio back up again. So for those of you that have donated, thank you so much. You're helping me pay my rent to keep my studio space available. Okay, let's talk supplies, shall we? So first things first, we're all painting at home tonight, right? We're likely not in a studio space that has paint all over it. So since we are painting at home, I'm painting at home. <laughs> I'll just tell you a story in a little bit. I think I'm gonna lose my painting at home privileges. Something just happens. We'll talk about that in a little bit when we tell stories. Okay, um, but since we are all painting at home, take a look around, make sure there's nothing in your immediate surroundings that you're concerned about getting paint on. The paint that I'm using and the paint, if you got it from the studio, the paint that you're using is acrylic paint, water-based, water-soluble, if you get it on your clothes and it dries, however, it's a real bear to get out. If you get it in fabric, it essentially turns to plastic and bonds to the fibers. So let's take a moment, look around, make sure you're not standing on a really nice rug, make sure you don't have a tablecloth under you, right? Check your surroundings. If you have sleeves, pull them up, get them up out the way. It's really easy when you're painting to rub your arm through your paint if you're not careful. Um, paint make sure you have a paint shirt or an apron right i have my fancy pants apron on um so we've got that all covered okay so paint shirt apron canvas tonight i have a 16 by 20 let me turn this a little zoop there we go a 16 by 20 stretched canvas um i'm gonna go vertical tonight with it i think this painting works well vertical i think it works it would work nice horizontal also. I don't know why a minute ago when I talked about how many foxes are you gonna put on there? How cute would it be to turn it horizontal and have two foxes facing each other with their little noses touching? That'd be super cute, right? So anyway, it's your painting. It's whatever you want it to be. So if you have a spot that will accommodate a nice landscape painting, that's what you'll do tonight. Okay, but now's the time to make that decision. While, while I talk through this, think about if you're going vertical or horizontal. If you have a stretched canvas like I do, that's stretched, wrapped around, stapled on the back, you're right, alcohol does, does remove, um, I just saw a comment come across, isopropyl alcohol does remove paint from clothing. Murphy's oil soap is a winner too. Leave it soak overnight with Murphy's oil soap toothbrush it in the morning. Um, thanks for that tip. Um, wrap it around, stretch it, stapled on the back. If you have a canvas like this, as you go, make sure and paint those edges. 
well, I shouldn't say make sure, paint them or don't. But if you start painting your edges, then finish painting your edges. You don't wanna have your painting. You don't wanna have this painted in this side and then not do that side or the bottom. Um, is my sound okay? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Perfect, okay. Somebody's having sound issues. Just thought I'd check. Okay. Um, so if you're painting your edges, make sure you're, you paint them all. You don't wanna stop halfway through and have it look messy and unfinished, okay? So paint them or don't. Okay, so apron, shirt, canvas. Let's talk about, um, let's see, water cup. Make sure you have a water cup that's filled halfway full, doesn't have to be all the way, with cool or cold water, never warm or hot, cool or cold, okay? I like to use something heavy. You could use a coffee cup. I'm less likely to knock it over if it's a heavy cup, okay? Personal preference on my part. Brushes. So tonight we have our big, our big wash brush for the background. Yours might be a filbert. Your, he might be completely round. He might be flat, he might be angled, but your biggest brush you have, right? We're gonna use this for the background. We're gonna want a medium brush for our fox. Maybe some of those um, snow twirls in the background, okay? And then a pointy brush for your details. I'm gonna use this pointy brush. This is my round number five, right? The smaller the number, the smaller the brush, I think. Um, but I'm gonna use a round number five for my details, but then, I also pulled out of my supplies a couple really fine pointy brushes. This I think is gonna help me with the mouth on my fox because that's a real fine line that I, um, I might use this for some little tiny branches, little tiny twigs on my trees. So whatever brushes you decide to use tonight, let's find those now. And I like to take my brushes, dump them in my water cup, leave them there. I will only leave them there while I'm painting. When I'm done painting at the end of the night, I'll take them all out, wash them, lay them flat to dry. But while I'm painting, I'll leave them in here. That keeps me from having a brush that's laying around half dry with paint that gets all crusty and gross, right? Um, anyway, yeah. Paper towels, make sure you have a little stack of paper towels down here to uh, blot your brushes on. Uh, something else that you may or may not have, I, I like to keep a paint pen in my paint supplies, in my art bag. Um, I feel every artist should sign their work. Um, bottom left, did you join audio, Brittany? Yeah. Sorry, Brittany. You might just log out and log back in. She, I'm saying that and she can't hear me. She has no sound. Can somebody type that? Have her log out and log back in, see if that works. Um, I keep a paint pen in my, in my supplies because I feel every artist should sign their painting. Thanks everybody. Um, and I'm really bad at signing with a brush. So I keep this to sign my painting. With. Okay. <laughs> paint, let's talk about our colors. This is part of the reason I'm about to lose my, my kitchen privileges, my painting in the kitchen privileges. I had a paint spill. Um, I have lost all my paper plates, so I'm painting on dinner plates. No one tell my husband. This is our secret. Don't, don't you tell. He'll never know. <laughs> or he will, and I'll just giggle. Okay, so colors that I have tonight. I have white. I'm using blockout white. Uh, we often have the conversation, the difference between blockout white and titanium white. I like blockout white because it's a little heavier. Um, that's it. But if you have titanium, you're fine. Orange. I think it's called chrome orange, but just a lovely orange for our fox. Red. I alluded to red earlier. Not super concerned about what red you have. Sometimes we have a conversation about red, making sure it's a red that's more blue and less orange. Not worried about it tonight, though. Any red you have will do because we're going to mix it for pink. Phthalo blue, 
I love phthalo blue because it's nice and deep and dark. That's going to help us get those that dark color around the outside edge. And then Mars black. So with those five colors, that's what I'm going to, uh, that's how I'm going to do this painting tonight. Okay, let's talk about our painting. I always like for you to know the direction I'm going to go because I would want a roadmap if I were taking a class, right? How is this all going to pan out tonight? So for a painting like this, we're going to paint the whole background first. And if we look at this, I know it's hard to see because it's on a, a screen, on a screen, on a screen, but it's light in the middle and then gets darker as we get out towards the edges. So that's what we're going to do. Um, the raccoon, I see the comment about the raccoon painting. I think it is, if it's not up on YouTube, it will be. I got to get them up on YouTube. So it'll be there soon if, if it's not already. Um, lighter and then darker. So we're going to paint that whole background first. Okay. Getting darker as we get out towards our four corners. And then we're going to play and put, I'm going to call them um, snow snowflakes, maybe the, the dots that are in the background. We're going to work on like dry brushing some of those back in there, not using a lot of paint. We'll talk about that. Then we're going to put our fox on there. We're going to set a place for him, a little spot down here for him to sit. And we're going to put our fox on there in white first. So it's going to be really, it's going to be a struggle, but you're going to stay with me, okay? Because we're going to put him in white first to give him that nice strong base. Let that dry. And then we'll start putting color over top of him, the orange and the black, and then all the details. While that white is drying, we'll get up here and we'll play in these branches, okay? Then we'll get some color, get some snow on the branches finish up the fox and then we'll finish up with those, um, there we go, with the white snow that's everywhere that's even over top of the fox in a couple places. So that's how this is gonna go. So with that, Marie, I, oh, it just turned 7.15. <laughs> I was like, I feel like I need to stall for a minute. But no, my, uh, the clock on my stove turns 7.15. It's a thing. I talk for 15 minutes, whether I intend to or not. I am a woman of habit, evidently. Let's get started, shall we? So now your brushes. Got all our brushes in our water cup, all the brushes we think we're gonna use. Um, if you have new brushes, if you got new brushes from the studio or from anywhere for that matter, you're gonna wanna tap, tap, tap them in the bottom of that cup. New brushes, when they ship from the factory, they come with a starch on them that holds them nice and stiff so they don't get messed up in shipping. You wanna clean that starch out of there, okay? If you have old brushes, you might do this to soften them up a little bit because my old brushes have a little bit of dried paint residue in them, okay? So I'm just gonna tap, 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 soften it up a little bit. Let's dry it off on the paper towel, push that water out. and. I'm going to, anytime I take, I'm laughing at this plate because I know my husband's not going to be pleased. That man loves me. <laughs> I'm so lucky. Anytime we take color, we always go in the edge, never the middle because you don't want to mess that whole puddle of paint up, always in the edge. So if I pull white from here and this spot gets a little messy, later on I can clean my brush out and pull from this side and have clean white paint still, okay? So I'm gonna take a bunch of white, load that brush up, and a tiny bit of blue to start, tiny, tiny bit, zoop, that might be enough. I might get more, but that might be enough. That blue gets overwhelming real fast. And I'm gonna start in the middle, maybe a little higher than middle, with that light blue, I'm gonna go around and around and around. Now, our goal is to cover this whole canvas, getting darker as we spread out, okay? So as I come in for more paint, I'm gonna get some more white, 
and a little more blue. But go easy, that, that blue is powerful. It'll take over real fast if you're not careful. And I'm just going around and around and around. By the time I get out to my four corners, oh, cool whip lid, that's a good one, Rhonda. By the time I get out to my four corners, I'm gonna be using pretty much straight blue, no white. Okay, so we have to work on gradually getting there. You know, when I was a kid talking about what we use for, um, what we use for palettes. When I was a kid, there were these meals that you got. Why do I wanna say Michelinas, like little microwave meals. And they came on these um, almost like Corel kind of plates, these little plastic Corel plates. And I'd use those, right, instead of throwing them away. I'm, I'm using this because I didn't realize till we were getting ready to start that I didn't have a paper plate. Oops. Oh, so I do like to be respectful of everyone's time while we're doing this. Um, I'll give you till 7.30 to get this background covered. When it comes to 7.30, if we're not ready, I'll ask. And if you're not ready, I'll have you flail flail wildly so I can see you and then I'll give you a couple more minutes if we need okay something I feel we should talk about is blending as if we work on something sometimes we feel like we're getting stripes of color as we go out and it kind of looks like a chunky bullseye let's talk about that real quick so I don't get that. So I don't get these stripes of color, these bands of color that are really defined. To blend, I know acrylic paint blends while it's wet. Once it's dry, it will not blend. So I have my next loaded, I have my next, um, my next um, stripe of paint ready to go on, right? There's a little more blue in there. So I'm gonna start here in my new section. And if I just go out from there, I'm gonna have this hard line. So anytime I blend, I'm gonna start in the new section, come back down into the old section, picking up some of that paint, and then back out. So I, I start out, I work in and then back out. I'm one step forward, two steps back. One step forward, two steps back. And if you paint like that, that should keep you from getting that real hard, hard line. Another um, another word of wisdom too, don't be afraid to load that brush up with paint. Look how much paint I'm using. Ooh, a lot of paint, scoop it. It's so much easier if you get a lot of paint on your canvas and move that around once it's on there. Okay, I'm starting to get out closer to my edges. Start to get darker. All right, that was my goal, was to get darker as I get out to those four corners.
And then do you remember early we talked about um, painting your edges? Either paint them or don't. It's up to you, right? But now's the time. As you get out to those edges, go ahead and wrap your paint all the way around. Again, you don't have to paint your edges, but if you start painting them, you want to finish painting them. Ooh. Anybody else worried about Brittany? Brittany, did you get sound? Did you make it back to us? I'm worried about Brittany. Brittany, let us know if you're okay. As we paint tonight, I'm gonna to remind you to breathe, right? Um, anytime we start something new, we have a tendency to hold our breath. So I'll try to remind you to breathe, let it out. Painting should be fun, right? It can be a challenge, but it should never be frustrating. If it's frustrating, put your brushes away, come back to it another day, okay? As soon as class is over tonight, I will, um, I'll post the link, the Zoom link up in the event so you can access it and come back and finish your painting later. The other Zoom links are still up since I don't have those classes up on YouTube yet. So I'm wondering, I bet the raccoon, if it's not up on YouTube, it might be, I don't remember. My life right now is a blur. If it's not up on YouTube, the, um, the Zoom link is still on the event page. And it's funny, as I'm painting, I already know 7.30 isn't enough time. Let's go 7.35. That's, a, that's 10 minutes from now. So you've got another 10 minutes to get this background covered. Make sure you get your edges if you're, if you're painting edges. Oh, thanks for that, Emily. You used the Zoom link for it a couple weeks ago. Yeah, then I don't, I probably haven't posted it up on YouTube yet if the Zoom link is still there. I should probably do that tomorrow, sit down and take some time and get those all uploaded to YouTube so I can lighten the load on my Zoom a little bit. So um, if we're looking for measurements on where that box is gonna sit, if you're using a 16 by 20 like I am, he's gonna sit about, his bottom is gonna sit about four fingers from the bottom. So that's where I want my painting to get nice and dark is about four fingers from the bottom. And then the tip, tippy top of his nose is about halfway up my canvas. So my fox is gonna be ooh, about almost a brush length, not quite. It's gonna be a decent size right here in the middle. If you're using a smaller canvas or a different, different shaped canvas, if we look at this painting, his, his nose is real close. It's a little left to center but it is real close to the middle, to the middle of the canvas.
unless you decide to do a smaller fox. That's up to you. Oh, edges, get those edges. I love stretch canvases because you can paint the edges. And then if you decide you wanna display this later, a lot of times we paint just to learn, right? Just to learn techniques. Um, but if you, if you have a painting that you really like and you've painted the edges, then you don't have to worry about it. Your painting's done. You don't have to frame it if you don't want. You don't have to do anything else with it. That's why stretch canvases are nice. So again, about 7.35, I'll check in. And at that point, I'll see if we need another, another five or so minutes. And I know the question usually comes up. We do not, we don't need to blow dry it. There may come a time tonight that we will, but not, not at this point. Your canvas can still be a little wet before we move on to the next step. go edges once your whole canvas is covered brush and water cup oh Rhonda I see your question and I don't know I think her name was Kim I don't know I think we should worry about her too right Poor Brittany that can't hear us and poor Kim that was in the ER last week. We're all just falling apart, aren't we? We're a mess, a collective mess. And we're all in this together. So we're all one big mess. Okay, about another five minutes, okay. I see, uh, since we do have a good five minutes, I see some of you are already done. If you're done, you could find a napkin or some scratch paper and we could start to practice that box. What do you think, shall we? Let's practice that box. When, you're, when we're ready for the box, we're gonna break them down into shapes. And I know sometimes it helps me to do it to do it a couple times on on scratch paper, just to figure out what I need to make bigger, what I need to make smaller. If this is the ground for my fox where he's going to sit, his body is an oval. His head is kind of a teardrop. Then we start to fill him in a little bit, connect his neck a little, might puff his chest out a little more, right? Connect him back here, round his nose out, give him a little more pronounced forehead. We'll put his legs in up here. Put those ears on, little background ear, big ear in the front. That tail wraps around this way, kind of in front of his legs a little bit. OK. 
Okay. Once we start to break him down into shapes, then we split his head, split him in half with that color. That top, top half is orange, this half is white. So that's something if you wanted to do a little sketching with a pencil on a paper towel to kind of get the feel for how you want your fox to look. Again, start with, start with an oval body that's not straight up and down. He's kind of on a 45, okay? Oval body, raindrop head. Then we start to, we start to connect him. So we connect his, his head to his body. Might poof his chest out a little bit more here. Round this out, his muzzle. Give him a little more pronounced forehead. Ears, little ear in the back, big ear in the front. Legs. Tail. Okay. feel like the, the more we do that, the more, as I did this one, I'm like, ooh, his head is too, way too close to his body, right? His head looks too, he looks too, uh, too stumpy. He looks like he has no neck, right? I like this one better with the head, with that raindrop shape, not connecting to the oval. So go ahead and start to practice some of that. See how you feel about how your box is gonna look. Um, one more minute and I'm going to check in and see where you're at with your background. And the beauty of this, when we get ready to put that fox on there, like I mentioned earlier, we're going to do him in white first. Um, because he needs that orange, needs that strong base to sit on. So by putting him on there in white first, if it all goes horribly awry, right? We catch our breath, you add a little bit of blue, smush it back into the background, let it dry and go again. That's when you can come back to the video and watch it again, try the process again. It's the beauty of doing that, doing that fox in white first. Okay, it is 735, flail wildly if you're not ready. Oh, a flail, I see, I see a couple flails. Okay, five more minutes. So 740, so five minutes, that gives you time if you need to go grab a beverage, take potty break. At 740, we'll move on. You're gonna need some clean white paint for the next step. Little bit of red, tiny bit of blue. We're gonna play more in that background. Marie, how's your fox looking? Are you practicing? Oh, no? Do we need to talk about it? Do we need to have a fox conversation? We can do this. You've got this. Part of it too is not, um, um, not judging it halfway through the process, right? It's supposed to look rough because it's just, and it's just gonna be white to start but I think it's gonna make a huge difference once you put that eye and the mouth, it'll be good. Oh no, you're typing stuff. Oh no. Hang on, let me open my, let me open my Facebooks. Okay, weird fox mouse hybrid. Okay, okay. I kind of have to see him now. You kind of have to, well, snap a picture and private message it to me. Okay. Oh, Andrea, poor Flash. Poor Flash, why won't you play with that baby? Um, you said that and Gertrude is behind me. 
snoring louder than I have ever heard her snore. Oh, <laughs> did you tell Flash? It's paint night, buddy. Did you say it like that too? <laughs> it's how I talk to Gertrude. Okay, Marie, bigger head and pull it out a little bit. Give him a little more of a neck and make him a little bit bigger. Oh, I can, yeah, absolutely. Marie, you have kind of what I had here. Head is too close to the body, but also the head on yours is too small. So set the head away from the body a little bit and make it a little bit bigger. So two minutes and we're gonna move on. So the way, the way we're doing this fox again, we get a clean spot here. Oval, oval body that's like on a 45 degree angle. We know by looking at these two, we like the head that is away from the body a little bit. And the head is like a, like a raindrop. Oh, this is gonna be weird because I'm doing it at a weird angle. But you're gonna disconnect that raindrop a little bit from the head but then we can connect it, right? So that then becomes the neck. I can broaden this out a little bit if I wanna give him a little more chest. Round this out for his nose. Then we give those ears, little ear, big ear, some legs. This is such a weird angle that I'm doing, sorry. And then tail, that tail that wraps around. Okay. Oh, <laughs> oh no, I just saw your, I saw your, uh, your chat, Chris and Jay. I was like, oh crap, <laughs> my video's off, crap. That would be just like me. <laughs> those of you, those of you that haven't been here through this whole thing, there have been times when I have carried on just to talking and teaching away. Not a soul out there could hear me because <laughs> I had accidentally muted myself. Can't be trusted. Oh, look at that. It's 740. Let's move on. Here we go. All right. So I think the first thing I wanna do, I wanna set a place where my fox is gonna sit. Set a place where he's gonna sit. Make a place where he's gonna sit. And again, I said my fox is gonna sit about four fingers off the bottom. So I'm gonna take that big brush, clean it out, dry it off. Doesn't have to be super clean. I still have blue in there. That's okay. With that big brush, clean it out, dry it off. I'm gonna take some white. Now, I'm gonna do that pendulum thing that I like to do, right? The pendulum thing, if you don't know, we have a tendency to put our brush down, draw a line, pull it up. If you do that, you have a mark where you set your brush down and a mark where you pick it up. It's a solid line. It's not what I want. I wanna do a really nice sweep, which means I'm gonna sweep in, touch my canvas, sweep back out. It's all one fluid motion, okay? I'm gonna do that here, about four fingers from the bottom, holding my brush skinny ways. And I'm just giving, I have just white, it's okay if this is a little wet. We can add a little more white to it later. And I think we will to hide our fox's feet. But for now, I'm giving myself just a nice little spot right here in the middle. It's pretty flat, but there's a little curve to it. A nice little spot for him to sit. Oh, I said him. I guess I don't know if my fox is a him.
Now I could add a little blue to that if I wanted. Ooh, I picked up a little bit. I don't even have to add any. Picked up a little bit of blue. I think I might leave that. I kind of like it. It's it's very broken, right? So a little bit of shushes. All I've done here is identified where that fox is gonna, where he's gonna sit. And then I think I'm done with my big brush for tonight. Okay. All right. So we know now where he's gonna sit. I know now if I find halfway on my canvas, I know his nose is gonna be right about here. That helps me know kind of how big my fox is gonna be. Okay, not gonna do that yet, but now I know how big he's gonna be. Okay, let's continue to play in that background a little bit. We're gonna do um, some dry brushing in the background for those um, those different, I don't even, I still don't know what to call them. I don't know if they're lights, if they're snowflakes, those circles in the background. Find your medium brush, clean it out and dry it off. And we can do these, um, these background circles, orbs, that's a good, well done. See, that's why you guys are here with me, orbs. Okay, so my orbs in the background, I'm not going to use very much paint at all. So I have my medium brush cleaned out, dried off. Tiny bit of paint. I think I'm going to start with a little bit of this white that has a tiny bit of blue in it. Just a tiny, tiny bit of paint. And the way for me to know it's a tiny bit of paint to actually paint it on my hand. I'm gonna paint some of it off. So I have so little paint in there, you can see through to my bristles, right? Almost dry brushing. And I'm gonna start here. Let's put some of these on here. Round, 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 stop. Let me get close so you can see what I'm doing. Wipe it off. Go out here. I have so little paint on there. I know you probably can't hear it, but you can, I can hear my brush dragging across the canvas. That's dry brushing. I can hear it dragging across there. Now I'm going to put all of my orbs, I think, above ground level. I'm going to put them up in the sky. I'm going to make them all different sizes. I'm going to start with this light blue. And then I might add a little, little more blue. I might do some that are just white. And then I might mix a really light pink. But let's make some of them dime size, some of them quarter size. And let's do our best to keep them nice and random. Let's try to not get a pattern, which I know for some of us is a challenge, but we're gonna try. And you see, I haven't loaded my brush up again. I'm still dry brushing with that tiny, tiny bit that I have on there. So that was light blue. I'm gonna add a tiny, tiny more blue. Again, my paint is so light that you can see through the paint onto my bristles. 
that's how little paint I have on there. So, so little. I need a little more blues to make this a bigger difference. And you may ask why I'm painting on my hand. It, it, it's something I've always done. It helps me know for whatever reason, the amount of paint that I have on my, on my brush. You can use your paper towel just as well, but it, this is just something I've always done. I can't really explain why. Wish I could. <laughs> it always makes me giggle too. I'm like, I made this big deal about not getting paint on anything because it doesn't wash out. And then I just paint all over my body. It'll wash off your body. It just won't come out of clothing or it will. Like our friend earlier said, if you use isopropyl alcohol or um, Murphy's oil soap. Let's see, I think I'm gonna do just white. So I've done a really light blue really, really light blue. I've done a, a medium blue, a little darker blue. I'm gonna do some that are pretty darn white. And then I'm gonna go into a pink. Let's see, how about we orbit out until eight o'clock? Orbit. <laughs> we orb until, until eight. That gives us 10 minutes. And then I'll check in and see where we're at. But I want to make sure we have plenty of time to work on that box tonight. I don't want to shortchange him. And sometimes we have a habit of spending so much time on our background that we, uh, we shortchange some of the details. So let's not do that tonight. And these orbs, this is, a, this is something we can always go and add back in later if we decide we need more. Okay, pink. Pink it is. Oh, baby bulldog, what's wrong, honey? He's letting me. Okay. Tiny bit of red, white. I'm gonna keep this pink real pale. Ooh, that's pretty. Just a tiny bit of red, a whole lot of white, but still we're dry brushing tiny, tiny bits of paint. I like this by dry brushing, it almost looks like salt because I've used so little paint.
Now, if you wanna play a little bit, if you wanna get some little purple orbs in there, you could, but this is where we talk about our red, right? So our red, you wanna make sure you have a red that leans more blue and less orange. If your red is too orange and you try to mix it with blue to get purple, you're gonna get poop, okay? And we don't want poop in the sky. So if you're using Blick paint, if you're using Blick student acrylics, if you're using the paint that I, that I got for you at the studio, you're fine. You can mix those together. You can mix red and blue and get purple. If you're not sure, you can do a little test on your, on your plate. Take just a tiny bit of red and a tiny bit of blue. And it might look a little weird, might like look a little poopy, but add some white to it. And you'll know right away if you have a good purple or if you have a poo purple. If you have a poo purple, rinse your brush out, abort plan. But I like, that's a good looking purple. Get off. And then once I got it up there, no, no, I don't want purple up there. Never mind. Abort. Okay, so we've got about five, six minutes, five or six minutes to play in our orbs. Once we get those orbs on there, we're gonna go ahead and put our base coat for our fox down. I feel like I need just white, some bright white. I kind of want some of mine to overlap a little too. Overlapping is okay, right? We can have orbs bumping into one another. That's what orbs do. Ooh, that makes it a little more interesting when you have them overlap a little. Hey Marie, when you get a second, send me another pic of your of your um, your fox that's not a mouse anymore. Got another four minutes. Oh, Marie. <laughs> Even making the head bigger didn't, didn't do it? No? All right. Were the ears too small? Feel like we always have things to learn, huh?
I hope you guys are having as much fun with these orbs as I am. I love the way that looks. That's so soft. So we've got about three minutes and we're gonna move on. Um, you could at this point um, rinse your water out if you wanted to, because we're gonna want clean white for our base on our fox. So if you uh, clean your brush out, your medium brush, and it's coming out all blue, might be time for a water break. Might be time for clean water. So you've got two minutes to go get clean water if you need to. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna put our, our Fox knowledge to the, to the test on the canvas, it's gonna happen. <laughs> Probably, I just saw your message, Chris. Probably not something I should encourage, sorry. It's just something I've always done. And that could be why I'm covered in tattoos now because I like, I like color on my arm. So I'm sorry if we've started down a rabbit hole. My apologies. <sighs> how old is she? Let me know how old she is. Oh, good age. That's a good age. That's, and you know, it's an okay age. It's a tumultuous age. But I think that's probably when this started for me. Yeah, about then, about that age. Okay, it's eight o'clock. Eight o'clock, are we ready? Are we ready for Fox? It's gonna happen. Oh, two Foxes. Oh, oh, Marie, you're so funny. Marie, you're having a hard time with one Fox and all of a sudden you're like two, I'm putting two on there. That's why, see, that's why I love you guys. Cause we're gonna do it. Because we know regardless of what happens tonight, it's only paint. We're here to play and have fun. That's all that matters. If you walk out of here with a cool painting, that is super cool, right? But we got to do something new. We got to learn. We got to, I almost said explode our brains. We got to explode our brains. Not the word I was looking, expand. Explode is, that's different. Ew. <laughs> all right, Fox, it is. So I feel like, hang on, let's do this. I'm gonna do this one more time. I got all my sketches. One more time. Okay. Ooh. All right, so here we go. So if this is the snow that we put in, that white snow, we're gonna have an oval that's like on a 45, right? It's not straight up and down. We're gonna angle it. This is this is the worst. This is the crumpliest paper I have I could ever find, right? Then I'm gonna do a teardrop that's also on a 45 that is disconnected from this oval. Okay. These two are not connected. We learned on one of our other drawings that's what we liked because then we can connect them, right, for the neck. Then we'll start to round this out, make the forehead a little more pronounced, make this nose a little longer, right? Then we'll start getting into all these, all these fun like details, like round it out a little here, little ear that's in the background, this big, bigger ear that's closer to the front. 
our legs that come down into the snow. We'll put snow over top of them later. Then this tail that wraps around up onto the legs. Okay, that's basically what we're going for. So here we go. Again, white first. So medium brush, nice and clean with white. And I have to step over here because I'm right-handed. So I have to work on the right side doing something like this. So what did I say? The nose, if I find halfway on my canvas, my nose is gonna wind up right about here. Okay, so you know what I might do? I might start with my head because I know where I want my nose to wind up. So that, uh, that teardrop on a 45, and then my oval body. Okay. We're doing it all in white and filling it in right now. Give a little more of a forehead there. Connect that neck, Get that chest out just a little. Just filling it in. Everybody breathe, don't hold your breath. My line back here got a little wonky. I went a little crazy, I'm okay with that. Not gonna fret. I always think of a fox as having a really, um, that long pointy nose. Trying really hard not to over accentuate it, but. Oh, true, true, Marie. I just saw your comment. Block out white covers everything, right? Okay. And then that tail. I think I'm going to go ahead and put where the legs are going to go, right? So I'm going to have a that background leg that kind of comes straight down off the chest. Right? This is this is that right leg, that behind front leg. And then that, that front leg is gonna come down. I'm gonna leave a little separation there. And then where that leg connected right around that chest area, that's where my tail is gonna come from behind, out and around to the ground. Oh, big fluffy tail. OK. 
Okay. And you know what? I don't like that tail. So what did I say? If we do something we don't like, we send it back into the background. That, smush it back in there. And I'll go again. I feel like I made that tail too big. See, even artists make mistakes, right? I know, uh, I love that foxes have big fluffy tails, but that was way too big. I'm gonna send it back into the background. When you do that, when you, when you have an oops like I just did, I'm using those background brush strokes, right? It was that big round brush stroke to send that tail back in, back into the background, and then I'll go again. That's part of being an artist too, is, uh, is knowing that mistakes happen, painting long enough that you know how to get yourself out of a, of a situation and not fretting about it. I know here too, where I, where I made that tail way too big, I can put a couple orbs there to cam to a little camouflage. There is always a way to fix it. Always, always. Okay, let's try that tail again. Smaller. It's better. Okay. I just saw your comment. Is it Anissa? Anissa, your tail got too big too. It's all right. We smoosh it back into the background and we go again. But now I have to leave it alone because I have wet blue there. So um, I think I'm going to do one more thing just to help me know that it's a fox. I'm going to put ears on there. I'm going to take my pointy brush and I'm just going to put them in white just for now with a little bit of white. I, I'll cover them in black in a little bit. But it's going to help me uh, make sense of it to feel like it's a fox to see if I need to change anything. So I've got that ear that's in the background that is about it appears to be about halfway down on the head on that right side. That one. And then that ear that's in front. And I love that this fox has big, luscious ears. Like I might want these to be a little bit bigger. Okay. All right. Once we have that, all that white on there for our fox, we're going to leave that alone now. This is hard too, is to have this weird looking white thing on there because it doesn't look like a heck of a lot right now, right? But we have to leave it there, let that white dry a little bit. And it's really hard to leave something. Like I feel like this tail is still a mess and I wanna get in there and mess with it. Not going to, gonna leave it there, let it dry. That's hard to do to sit in what you feel like might be a mistake, but we have to, we gotta let it dry. And we know it's not a mistake, it's gonna be fine, right? What does Bob say? There are no mistakes, happy accidents. Okay, I'll leave that alone. 
All right. I'm going to give you a couple more minutes just to get the shape down for your fox. As I look at it, I feel like I need to lower his body down a little bit. His legs, his front legs are way lower than his, than his body. Lower his body down in the snow a little. And I'm gonna let him dry. Okay. A little more white on this, on this tail to give that orange a nice base to sit upon. Okay. All right, couple more minutes to get that shape down. Still feel like I want this ear to be bigger. I just keep taking little, little bites each time. So I don't want to make that ear too big. But I know foxes have those big, luscious ears. And we're going to get ready while that fox is drying. We're going to get ready here in another minute. I'm just getting a little more white paint on there. We're going to get ready here in a minute and go up and play in these trees. So find some of your um, really fine brushes, your pointy brushes. Realized my fox wasn't sitting in the snow. I needed to give him a little bit of a bump, a little bit of a butt there. Where should I? Oh yeah, we might need to see a picture. Okay, Leanne, where are you? Oh, I see. Okay. Um. Oh goodness. I think, Leanne, you're not going to have a tail around here. You're going to have that tail just right here, like out, out the right-hand side, right? Because the only reason we can see the fox's tail over here is because foxes have those long, flowy tails. I think you're going to have just that, just a little blurp right there where the rump connects to the snow, okay? Okay, perfect. And I would go ahead and paint it white, give it that nice, that nice base. Okay. Woo. Let's leave that alone, shall we? Let's let that dry. Got to take our eyeballs off of it for a little bit, or we'll just keep picking at it. Let's go up here to these trees. If we look at the original picture, you can see, and I, I'm going to hold this up. You're probably not going to be able to see it here. But if you look at the original, these are really fine trees. They come in from the sides, up from the corners, in, they kind of frame around our fox. They don't start any lower than halfway up the canvas, right? So they're halfway and up. They come in from both sides. I don't see any that come in from the top. They just come in from the sides. And we're going to do a couple of those with phthalo blue. And then we're going to do a couple of the bigger branches that are a little closer with snow on them. We're going to do those in white and then put snow over them in a little bit. So let's put, start with a really fine brush. One of your smallest brushes you can find. Um, if you have a brush that's bigger than you want, you can use a bigger brush. The trick is, if you're using a brush that you feel might be too big, you wanna make sure it comes to a really nice point. 
and then you only want to use boop that much of the bristles boop just that much if you bend those bristles you're pressing too hard and you're going to wind up with fat branches right you only want to use one more time boop just that much boop okay here we go so how about I'm going to start with those phthalo blue branches and I'm going to put maybe one here, another here, maybe three or four on each side. And then we're going to do a couple heavier. It looks like there are two black branches on the left and one black branch on the right. So phthalo blue first. So I have my pointy brush, clean it out, dry it off. Then with the bristles, just the bristles, get a drip of water, just one drip, right there in the edge of your blue, put that drip and squish it around. I'm just thinning down a little bit of that phthalo blue, thinning it down to the consistency of ink. It's gonna help it flow further across the canvas. Okay. Now remember, don't press hard. Here we go. I'm gonna do three, I think three on this side and they're gonna go halfway, maybe a little further. We'll see. Woo. <laughs> Did it. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give this guy a couple, a couple branch friends. As I do this, as I give him twigs, start on the branch everybody over here is going to pull to the right so even his little twiggy friends they're going to pull to the right pull to the right pull to the right okay let's do another one another little drip of water then that blue down Consistency of ink. Start here. Pull to the right. To the right. Pull to the right. If this is your first time doing uh, doing branches like this, you'll notice I'm not holding my brush like I hold a pencil. I'm not holding it way up tight, way up, way up close to the bristles. I'm holding it more back here. And I'm not holding my brush perpendicular to the canvas. I'm holding it parallel and just lightly dragging it across, right? I'm not holding it like this. I'm holding it like this and dragging it across. When you get that movement down, something else that you might try as you drag it across, twirl it. Now, as I go, I'm giving it like one rotation to get across my canvas. By twirling it, that helps my branches get a little wiggly, just a little, and a little more natural feeling and less cartoony feeling. Don't be afraid to crisscross these in places. They're allowed to touch. <clears throat> That's okay. Now, once we have the left side, we gotta do the right side. So if everybody on the left pulled to the right, everybody on the right has to pull to the left. We're still using phthalo blue. We'll move on to black here in a second. Just phthalo blue for now. Now remember, 
you're not glued in place. As you do this, sometimes you'll find one direction is easier than the other to pull your brush. So if it's awkward for you to pull from the right to the left, flip your canvas, flip it upside down. Move that canvas to make you to make it comfortable for you. All right, I feel pretty good. That's cool, putting those blue branches over top of my, <coughs> excuse me, over top of my orbs. That adds that little bit of dimension. <coughs> All right, once we've got the blue on there, I'm gonna rinse my brush out, drip a water, clean it out, dry it off, drip a water in the edge of my black. Again, I'm looking for the consistency of ink, maybe a little heavier, but you have to thin your paint down a little bit to make it easier to drag across the canvas. And what did I say? I have two, two black branches on the left and one black branch on the right. And these can be a little heavier than the blue ones. So I'm gonna press my brush a little harder. I'm gonna bend those bristles a little harder. Not much though. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got a frog in my throat. <clears throat> now the beauty of these black branches, if they get too heavy, don't worry about it. We're gonna let them dry and then we're gonna put white on top of them so it looks like snow. That'll thin them right back down, okay? So don't worry if, they, if you feel they get too fat. Another one on this side. Two on the left, one on the right. Mm -hmm. Remember, keep adding a little bit of water to thin that paint down. Helps it flow across the canvas. I think something else about branches that I've learned over the years <clears throat> is just letting them happen and not feeling the need to go back over and fix and try to try to make them better and try to fix them. If you have a spot where the paint breaks up, for example, see right in here, the paint got really thin on this one. It's not as heavy as that one. I'm okay with that. If I go back and try to start fixing it, it's going to start to get messy. It's going to be really hard for me to find that same line. We're going to have a tendency to make, it's going to make our branches fatter. 
it's going to get out of control. So <clears throat> a lot of the learning process in this is getting a branch on there and just walking away from it, letting it be what it's going to be. Just coming back and, and thickening these up just a little bit as they as they're out at the edges here, because in nature they would be a little thicker. I want one up here. There we go. All right. Whoo! It's happening, guys. We're doing it. Magic. All right, we'll take a couple more minutes so you can work on those branches. Let's see, what haven't we talked about tonight? I'm feeling pressure now. It's 8.30 and we've not, we've not talked a lot tonight. We've been pretty focused tonight. All right, Emily, what'd you eat for dinner? Uh, while well, you're letting me know, um, chickens are good. Oh my gosh, I don't know what has happened, but the chickens have like picked up laying in the past couple days. We were getting light. We have 27 chickens. Oh my God, pot roast and potatoes. Sounds good. Were there carrots in it? Or was it just potatoes? Did you have fresh bread with it? Did you have rolls with butter? You knew I had to swing it back around. Oh. <laughs> you knew I had to swing it back around to butter, by the way. Rolls with butter. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm, butter y'all know how i feel about butter anyway so we were we had 27 chickens we have 25 hens two roosters and we were getting oh one or two eggs a day which they ease up in the winter time right the days are shorter it's super cold and then all of a sudden a couple days ago we got nine eggs then seven eggs the next day, then eight eggs. So I think they're back in high gear and it's still cold and the days are still short. I don't know what was said to them. They might've heard me saying that they needed to get their act together. And I may have called them freeloaders. Um, and Phyllis is magnificent by the way. Oh, Phyllis, she's just special. She's a special character. Okay, branches. Let's leave those branches around, shall we? Should we go back down into the box now? Let's put some black on the box. So right now, don't worry about the mouth. Don't worry about the nose. Don't worry about the eye. We'll do those very last. Look at the other black parts on the fox. The first part I'm I'm going to work on. <clears throat> Man, I still have this tickle. The first part I'm going to work on, I'm going to use my medium brush. You can use your small brush if you want, but I'm going to use my medium brush. Okay. And the first part I want to work on is a little bit of black, right? here along the um like where the where the legs are and right along the bottom so kind of low belly ish i'm going to cover a lot of this with orange but i want to put some black down here that's going to help darken the orange that goes over top okay just a tiny tiny bit little black down here. I'll put orange over top of it, but this is going to help set him down a little bit. Okay, so right down along the bottom of that oval body that we put on there. <clears throat> okay. Our next step is legs. So that back leg, get that guy down there, get him in. Remember, thicker toward the body. 
and then they come, come down thinner as you get down into the snow. And I'm not putting feet on. I'm gonna let them just disappear down into the snow. There's one. And now that front leg, that front leg comes up into the body. Okay. Up into the body a little bit. Still disappears down into the snow. And do you see how I'm painting this in? I'm using little tiny brush strokes. I'm using my medium brush, but I'm using it skinny ways and I'm doing little tiny pull, pull brush strokes. Pull down, pull down, pull down. Pull down, pull down, pull down. Little tiny brush strokes. That's not as important right now, but that will become important here in a minute when we start to think about that orange. So little tiny, like, I can't even think of like the motion for that. Like a little swipe, swipe, swipe. Like a little kitten paw. Swipe, swipe. Oh, yes, black. I'm using black. This looks a little brown because I ended up using real thin. Um, it was my black that was watered down from my branches. That's why this may look like a different color, that bottom, but it is black. Okay, I'm going to transition to a pointy brush <laughs> for the ears. And paint them black. I'll put white back in them later. But let's let's get them black first. Okay, my background ear. <clears throat> and then my ear in front. And I'm even bringing that black into the head just a little bit. You see with those little, oh, let me get close so you can see. With those little pull, pull, pull brush strokes. Pull, pull, pull. Bring this down a little. Pull, pull, pull. Right, like I did down here on the leg too. Pull, pull, pull. Okay. Now, again, I'm not worried about the feet. I'm going to come back with some snow at the very end and put some fresh white snow there to camouflage the bottom. Okay. Whew, it's happening, guys. It's happening. All right. Let's move into orange. I think I might stay with that, uh, with that pointy brush. I like that. No, medium. You know, I never know what brush is going to strike my fancy. <clears throat> Just a, one of the smaller brushes. But that's to tell you that you can use what, whatever brush makes you happy, right? If you want to use a small, one of your small pointy brushes, you can absolutely do that. It's whatever you have the most, um, the most control over. I'm going to work on that tail and I think I'm going to use my medium. So with a little bit of orange, 
Now, if we look at the original picture, it's the tail <clears throat> that's closest to the body. And then it comes into like a, a white, uh, a white tip. Again, those pull, pull, pull brush strokes. I wouldn't be afraid either to add a little bit of white with your orange. Just a tiny bit, because you want it to be pretty, uh, pretty dark. But a little bit of white is okay. <clears throat> I don't know why I have a frog living in my throat all of a sudden. Who knows? Could be because I was outside all day today, but who knows? <clears throat> Ooh, for those of you that know what my day job is, we vaccinated almost 800 teachers today. Union County teachers, so exciting. That is a big day. That is one step to getting back to a little, <clears throat> a little closer to normal. And when I say we vaccinated, my team did. I stood, it's pretty cool, right, Sophia? I stood, I traffic control. Who knew I was gonna use my communications degree for traffic control? But in a pandemic, everybody in public health chips in. So my job was to do this today. That was my job all day. <laughs> and I was happy to do it to get those people vaccinated. Okay. Do you see how as I'm putting this tail in here, I'm like playing in orange and white, right? That orange in there. And then I'm coming back, I'm gonna get a little bit of white. And then I'm coming back with a little bit of white and doing just those little choo -choo -choo brush strokes. Choo -choo -choo. Especially if you're gonna do a little bit of white right along the top, because that's where the light would hit naturally, right? And then I think I'm going to leave this alone because this is going to be that white, um, the white tip of the tail that comes to a point. Okay, while we have that orange on our brush though, let's go ahead and paint the top half of the fox in. So now this orange is the top top half of the nose, splits that head in half, <coughs> and swoops down the neck and comes, comes back out alongside this leg right here. Okay. And that makes all of the right side of this fox orange. So I'm gonna start at the head with orange, little bit of white every now and then, those little choo 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 brush strokes. Go up to that ear. Be careful, that black might still be wet. And something I should probably mention, as we paint fur, we paint fur the way you would pet the animal. So let's imagine this, um, this fox is a dog. You would pet it, its forehead down its back. That's the way the fur grows. That's the way you're gonna paint it. So orange, a little bit of white. And I'm doing those little, Pull brush strokes down the way the fur grows. Now 
can get close again so you can see. Right? Now, as we get to this leg, we don't want a solid line, right? This is where your little pull-pull, choo-choo brush strokes are coming in really important. Pull down into the black and just let go. So they just kind of feather together right there. And if it's really cold, our fox is gonna be a little fluffy, right? So I think it's okay if we have a little, little pulls off his back, his back, her back, little ones. Don't want him to look like a porcupine. So be careful. But I think it's okay to have a little bit of fur, fur there on the back. And I'm taking that orange and white all the way down over top of this black, okay? You're gonna be able to see that black through and that's okay, that's why we put it there. It's adding that little bit of shadow. And then we talked about if you were gonna do a little bit of white, a little more on top of the tail, same thing with along the back. I'm gonna do, because that's nat <clears throat> naturally, that highlight, that's naturally where the light is gonna hit, is right along the back, the back of my fox. <clears throat> I want a little highlight right here on the, head too. Okay. Woo. Oh, that's exciting. All righty. I still feel like my fox needs a little more of a butt. Okay. All right, we're doing good, guys. My goal is to have us done by nine, so we're gonna keep moving. Now, remember, if you start to, if you start to feel like it's just not going well, take a breather. Okay, put your brushes in your water cup. As soon as class is over, I'll post the Zoom link in the event so you can come back and finish at your own pace. Okay, don't let me rush you. But I am gonna move on. I'm gonna rinse my brush out. Again, whatever brush makes you happy. I'm using my medium. You might be using your pointy brush. And I'm gonna go into bright white my, my, um, some clean block out white. And I did my tail first, so it's going to be driest. So I'm going to use that white and pull on around to get that, um, that lovely, um, white tip of my tail. And it's going to come right over in front of that leg. Same brush strokes, that little pull, 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 choo, choo, choo brush stroke. Oh. 
once I have my tail on there, the tip of that tail, let's put white down, down the chin. So down the bottom of the nose, the chin. Right down there in front of that orange, right down the chest. Still using those little choo 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 brush strokes. At this point, I'm using I'm using a decent amount of paint too because I like getting a lot of paint on there. I like the texture that the extra paint is giving me. There we go. Okay. All righty. Okay, gonna let that dry just a little. I'm gonna go to my little brush now, <clears throat> one of my fine detail brushes. And I'm gonna come on top of these black branches and add a little bit of white snow on them. Now, this is a really good time to identify where you want the snow. If you have a branch that got really fat, like I'm not sure how I feel about this one, being that far out on the end, he is pretty fat. I'm gonna take my pointy brush with white and I'm gonna lay white right across the top of that branch and give it snow and that's gonna thin it right out. Okay. So think about if snow were falling, where that snow would land naturally, right? It's probably not gonna land much here because that branch is pretty vertical. But as it starts to scoop out, that branch will hold a little bit of snow out there. Those little branch arms that reach more out, they're gonna hold snow. You can put as much snow or as little snow as you want on those branches. But I'm just putting snow on the black branches. I'm gonna leave those blue ones in the background. Oh, that's fun. I'm not putting snow everywhere on those branches either. I'm kind of breaking it up a little bit. I have a little break here, I'm trying to keep it looking natural. Snow, it wouldn't land evenly everywhere, not normally anyway. There's gonna be natural little breaks where the squirrels have knocked the snow off the trees. what squirrels do. Okay. Little more snow here. Again, this is something you're in your own home, right? You can finish this up later. Just wanna show you how, how it's gonna look. A snow on there. And then I'm gonna come back down to my fox and get those final details on there. Okay. So while I have white on my, on my little brush, I'm gonna put a little bit of white on the fronts of those ears, still using that little choo-choo-choo brush stroke. 
Okay, starting out at the tip and pulling down in just white. Cute. So a little white on the ears. While I have white on that brush, I'm gonna put, like I said, I'm gonna camouflage those feet, right? So with white on my brush, I'm gonna come back and do a couple little, little side to side swipes there, little pendulum swipes. Just to camouflage where my fox is sitting in the snow. I need a little right here on the breast. There we go. Okay. And then nose, mouth, eye, all in black. So pointy brush. Feel like I lost too much black in the ear. Put a little little black back in there. There we go. All right. Let's see. Nose. So it's round at the top. Um, flat. Maybe not quite flat. Maybe kind of like a gentle smile at the bottom of that nose. A little curve. Fill that in. Here's my fox nose. My fox mouth is a really fine line. And my fox eye is an upside down. Upside down curve. Oh my gosh, that's adorable. That's adorable. Playing down here in the leg a little bit, blending that. Okay. Let's see. Where are we? We're super close. I think I want a little black line along the back of that ear. There we go. Okay. Here we go. And then I'm going to take my little brush with a little bit of white. <clears throat> I wanna do just a little bloop right on top of that nose with white. It's a little glint of light, just a little shine, boop, right on top. And then with the other end, with my handle of my little brush, I'm going to put snow on there. Snow, snow. I don't know. I might use a bigger brush. These are, these are really small. Yep, I'm going to use a bigger brush. There we go. Big brush. Handle end. And these are the snows that I'm gonna put everywhere. I might even have some land on my fox. I guess because they're snow, right? These are snows, these, this is not, these are not orbs. All right. Oops, I got orange snow. Better than yellow snow, I suppose. So as we put our snow on there, this is our last step. Okay. 
you keep playing, keep painting, right? Keep having fun. I don't think I'm done yet. I think I'm going to play in my fox fur a little more. But um, that was that was the last, not quite the last step. The snow is one of the last steps. After that, you're going to um, you're going to be done. You're going to make sure and sign your painting. Remember, we talked earlier. I love that all artists. I really feel all artists should sign their paintings. Okay. If you don't want to sign on the front, that's fine. You can sign on the back. If you sign on the back, don't sign on the canvas, sign on the wood. You can use a Sharpie or a paint pen and sign on the wood. You don't want to sign on the canvas because it'll bleed through to the front over time. Okay. You can sign. I like to sign usually bottom left or bottom right corner. I'm not done though. So I don't think I'm going to, I'm not going to sign yet but usually down in the, in the bottom corner. So as we wrap up tonight, I wanna thank you so much for joining me. This was a lot of fun. I'm not done with this guy. I'm gonna keep playing with him a little bit. I wanna play in that fur a little more. Um, but this was a lot of fun tonight. Thanks so much for joining me, Painting Through the Pandemic. We have a class every Saturday night. Um, so I hope you'll join us again next week. All right, so. Uh, let me go ahead and stop the recording and then you're so welcome Sophia and then I will give you the opportunity to unmute so we can chat for a little bit okay so thank you so much